What are your hobbies? Go ahead. I'll give you 10 seconds or so to start thinking about what your hobbies are. What do you do for fun? What do you do that completely just involves your whole body that you just love doing that, you know, makes you forget about the world and kind of everything fades away? What are your hobbies? Some of you might be really trying to think about it. Some of you might have a list of things. Is your relationship one of your hobbies? Is one of the things that you do in your free time talk about how bad your relationship is? Do you think about how bad your relationship is? Do you obsess about it? Do you complain about it? Do you look at all the things they're doing wrong and, and, and pick apart every single thing and question it going to sleep at night? Has your negative, unhealthy relationship become your hobby? Tell me there's more than that. You know, I've been working with high school students, middle school students, and adults for years now. And one of the things that we talk about in class, and any anytime I do speaking engagements, is we talk about coping mechanisms. Coping mechanisms, there can be positive or negative. Positive coping skills are positive ways that help you deal with stress, and negative coping skills are negative ways that we deal with stress. And from the time we are young, we start building up our positive coping skills, or negative coping skills. Some of us have a good repertoire. We've got a whole bunch of really great things that we do, so we might not notice the stress that we're feeling. So what are some positive coping skills? Hopefully you can think of a few as I rattle off some of them. Yoga, meditation, talking to someone, progressive muscle relaxation, breathing, guided imagery. The list is ridiculously long of all positive things that you can do when you're feeling stressed. And not only are those things good when you're feeling stressed, but they're good to kind of keep yourself from, you know, like the, the, the pressure cooker that they used to have. Like nowadays, I think they look a little bit different, but you'd, you'd have that little thing on top and you'd go and you'd like let some of the hot air come out so that it wouldn't explode all over the place. And then if not, the whole thing, pow, would explode. So you'd slowly let off the pressure. Now, when you have all these positive coping skills, you're kind of slowly letting off the pressure. So things never become completely and totally overwhelming. When you don't have these positive coping skills, you do not have the ability to slowly release the pressure. And instead, when life brings you these up and down moments, as life will often do, we are not prepared for them. And we just keep adding and adding to our stress levels until we explode. Now, if you throw in there some negative coping skills, of things that a lot of people turn to, why do we turn to them? Because they're fast, they're easy, and they work. What are some of the negative coping skills that we use? Go ahead, I'm sure you know some of them. Alcohol, tobacco, any kind of drug, denying that anything is happening, complaining about things but not doing anything about it, cutting yourself. The list is, is very long there as well. Do they work for the moment to relieve the pain? Yeah, they do. And that's why so often people turn to those. Do they work long term? No. And the problem is, is that most people that are stuck in this negative pattern of dealing with their stress, they're in survival mode. When you're in victim mode and survival mode, you're just trying to get by. So you're trying to kind of reach out to anyone. You're basically a drowning person looking to anyone to come and save you, not realizing that all you have to do is put your feet down and stand up. You don't have to bring everyone down with you. You don't have to look around for someone to come and save you, for someone to throw you a life preserver. You've got it. And you've got it by putting your feet down and realizing, I can make changes. I can start finding my hobbies again. I can start rediscovering who I am and focusing on me. Because if not, your hobby is focusing on someone else, is focusing on someone else's problems, it's focusing on your problems and the relationship. And how do you have energy to do anything else? Imagine the things that you would be capable of if you let go of those negative coping mechanisms and you stopped talking about your problems and started thinking of solutions for your problems. Start looking at ways to improve and look at them and turn them into empowering statements, empowering beliefs, and turn them into positive coping skills. Because one of the things that I find with my clients and even with, with 14, 15, 16 year old kids is that when you are able to discover 
positive coping skills that work for you, you're happier. And then you don't want to be around the negative stuff because you don't have time for that. And then what do you attract when you surround yourself with positive coping skills? More positivity. What do you attract when you're surrounding yourself around negative coping skills? Negative Negativity. I mean, think about it. If someone, every time that they're having a hard time, goes to a bar, they could have the chance of becoming an alcoholic. Then they're around people that are also going to a bar to escape their problems and not deal with what's going on. So who you surround yourself with is going to be a part of your healing as well. Are they people that are using negative coping skills or are they people that are using positive coping skills? And to attract people that are healthy and fun, people want to know about your hobbies. What are the things that you enjoy doing? Because trying to have a conversation with someone where all they do is talk about the negative things that are going on in their life is not going to be a conversation you're going to want to stay around for very long. And if you're trying to attract a healthy partner, that healthy partner is going to not be interested in that either. So figuring out who you are, rediscovering your passions, rediscovering your positive coping skills will help you attract the right partner, will help you feel better about yourself, will help relieve the stress, it will increase your self-esteem, and it will introduce you to people that have similar interests and have new experiences with these people. Work on those positive coping skills, increase that self-esteem, and remember, you don't have to make your hobby your relationship or the failing of your relationship. It's time to find a new hobby.